Hi, good morning. Welcome to um, the first of our Sunday morning worship experiences or praying together experiences um, as a, the community of Camborne Church um, when we're not gathering in our building but actually gathering online. So welcome. Thank you for turning up. Thank you for working out how to turn up. Um, and uh, just as we begin, let's just become aware of God. Lord God, we invite your presence among us, within each of us. We know that distance for you is no challenge. That you can unite our hearts together by your one Holy Spirit. And we ask that you would move among us today as we join to worship you in this new way. Amen. Well, it wouldn't be church without announcements, would it? So <laughs> let's, uh, let's actually begin uh, with uh, a couple of announcements. Um, first, I just want to say, please, um, in these times, not just this week, but ahead, keep checking. If you're a member of the church Facebook group, keep checking that. If you're not, really consider strongly doing that. Consider joining Facebook. Can, um, it, it might not be your platform of choice, but it, it's probably the one in which we are uh, communicating most with one another so so join our our, our facebook group um it's generally been my uh, policy as minister not to send out friend requests to people in the congregation in case they don't want to be friends with me but to respond positively whenever i get one i might actually send out some friend requests i'll certainly respond positively to ones which are coming in if you're wanting to connect with me um as long as we've met i generally have that kind of rule that um like to do that but um you know, do send out anyway friend requests um to me connect with the church facebook group there, there's a, a another um, facebook group which is particularly for church members and those who are part of our fellowship as well as more public facebook group for the church and there's our website keep on checking to see if there's latest announcements on there check your email including in junk because quite a lot of things are going to junk um, when they're sent out from the office, even to me, I sometimes things sent out from the office, even in my name, sometimes go into my own junk, which is bizarre. But there you go. I really do know myself. Check my junk. I get messages for myself. So um, check that um, and, and keep in touch. WhatsApp groups uh, and the like. It's really important that we actually keep um, connecting with each other. Uh, at this time uh, if you've been part of a home group keep communicating there might be ways in which uh, home groups can happen virtually kind of um, over for example a, a platform called zoom zoom z o o m uh, could well allow sort of a video conference style bible study um, and a fellowship catch up so do that. We will be um, shortly uh, in the week ahead. We'll be contacting you about uh, care clusters, putting everyone in the church into a, a, a care cluster, generally with people who live near you. That's a way of, and we'll be encouraging you to um, keep in contact with those people, making sure that we're looking after each other's practical needs and making sure that people don't get too isolated. Uh, that's kind of on top of uh, what's happening with uh, home groups or other natural family networks and, 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 and the like. Just to make sure everyone's included so everyone is going to be put into a care cluster um, or, or, or just a handful of people. Um, where please just make sure that each person in that group is contacted uh, daily by somebody else in the group just to check that you're okay you can do shopping for each other whatever it is and um, if there are concerns 
or needs which just can't be met properly within that group, then please do get in contact with the church leaders or, or other appropriate agencies so that uh, wider needs uh, can be met, which might be all kinds of things. They might be financial, they might be psychological, they might be spiritual. Just keep an eye on, you know, practical. They Just keep an eye on each other. Love one another. Um, we're going to be having morning prayers, 9.15, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all being well. I'm struggling a wee bit with the technology, so um, it might not happen smoothly, but we'll learn. Um, so, uh, for maybe a quarter of an hour in the mornings, 9.15, uh, I'll be leaving us in prayer according to the, the Northumbria community. Some of you won't be able to come to that. You'll be busy at working and all the rest. Quite understand that. But some of you might appreciate that. Um, people will know that I've uh, opened up my own prayer time at 9.15 on many mornings anyway for one or two others to come alongside me. So um, we'll be doing that according to the Northumbria community's morning prayer. I've mentioned some of these on another video which is online so please do check up on that. Do all have to explain a bit about our 11.30 um, suggestion of fellowship walks, prayer walks, um, which is uh, 11.30 on Sunday, there or thereabouts. Come to the church car park if you can, if you're not one of those people who needs to be socially isolating but for whom social distance, at least two metres. Um, is appropriate then uh, you can come along and um, don't gather in a big group don't wait to be put with somebody else but actually if there's somebody else gathering for this prayer uh, walk or fellowship walk and you see one or two others with whom you can link up and go for a walk then move out of the car park go for a walk together talk to each other listen to each other talk to God listen to God have some fellowship time together. Half an hour is what I would suggest as a kind of minimum. Commit yourself to half an hour. If your particular group says, you know what, we'll go for longer, that's great. Uh, then you can decide that. But but half an hour is kind of what I'd ask people to commit to, really, if at all possible, health permitting. If it doesn't permit and you're saying, I can manage a quarter of an hour, I'll come up anyway and explain that, and that's fine. And the person you link up with go for a quarter of an hour. So um, we will do that while uh, while we're permitted, and that is still uh, according to the guidelines which are coming out of the um, government and elsewhere. Um, I have I will make this point, which I didn't make in my earlier video about those um, young children uh, who are too young really to understand the social distancing thing. Please don't bring them along um, if they're going to then, in, you know, not going to keep two metres from people. Uh, that's not appropriate. It's, it's not safe. So um, can't do that. On the back of that, I will just say that might hamper some people, obviously, from being able to come. But uh, if you're a two-parent family, then um, I know not everyone is. But if you're a two-parent family and you can leave children with one, then maybe a, a one adult could come out. And um, you could try again. I haven't announced this elsewhere, but maybe at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, you could uh, see if anyone who couldn't make the 11.30 comes back for a fellowship walk. Maybe the other partner, if you come at 3 o'clock, maybe there might be some people in the car park and we can see about that. You're offering two times in a day because you only need two people to turn up, three people to turn up for something to work, which is meaningful and helpful. Seven o'clock tonight, um, a national call to prayer. You're invited to uh, light a candle in the window of your home and to pray. There's plenty of resources online. Churches Together in England, Church of Scotland, Baptist Union of Great Britain, uh, Evangelical Alliance, all those organisations I know um, putting out material and calling people to pray 7 p.m. tonight, I dare say a number of others as well. Um, of course, quite a lot of denominations are part of churches together in England, so uh, that, that, that's kind of covered there. Um, so, so 
join in prayer this evening, prayer for our nation in that way. There are online guides, so do that. Um, that's probably enough uh, notices. There's quite a lot of notices in the beginning of our time, but it's important. It is important. Um, and I will also just say um, we're going to be looking at ways in which we can uh, introduce aspects of music uh, weekly, um, not necessarily embedded into our Sunday morning 10 o'clock thing, but videos of, of worship being posted, some posted to particular songs, maybe uh, some of our own worship leaders um, putting up videos of um of musical worship as well so that we can continue engaging in that form of of, of, uh, of praising god today i'm going to do mainly um some liturgical prayer and i'm just going to lead us through there's no liturgy coming up on screen i'm just going to lead us through some prayer then we're going to read scripture uh, and uh, i'm going to offer some reflections on that and uh, so let's come to worship God let us worship God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. O oh God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. Our lips shall give you praise. So we will bless you as long as we live and lift up our hands in your name. O oh, holy God, you call us together to be your holy people and so we join to give you praise for the joy of our creation, for our redemption in Christ and for the empowerment of your spirit. Gracious God, fill our hearts with your love and our lives with your glory as we come before you in worship and prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come as weak people, failing people. There's no other way we can come before God but weak and failing people whom he loves immensely. And so we come and acknowledge our need to God and receive his forgiveness. So we're going to go into a time of confession. I'm going to lead us. God of love and mercy, we come before you knowing that we're in need of forgiveness. We have sinned against you in our speaking and in our silence in our thinking and in our thoughtlessness, in our actions and in our inaction. We've sinned against you in not loving you with our whole heart and soul and strength, in not loving our sisters and brothers in Christ. Grant us, O oh Lord, your forgiveness. Restore us in the image of your Son and lead us along the way to your kingdom to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is to condemn? It's Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who's at the right hand of God and who intercedes for us, as it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. So if anyone is in Christ, there's a new creation, everything old has passed away, and see, everything has become new, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Receive God's gift of forgiveness and be at peace. And now we're about to come to listen to God's word, so let's pray. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, in whom the fullness of grace and wisdom Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit and give us grace to receive your word with reverence and humility, without which no one can understand your truth. 
for Christ's sake. Amen. So I'm going to read to you. You might find ways of getting various people to actually do the readings in the weeks ahead, but uh, at the moment I'm going to read to you from uh, John's Gospel. It's Jesus who's speaking. We're continuing, actually, in the uh, series we've been having about uh, thinking about things which Jesus said and did and what happened on, on, on the last night of his life on earth. And John 14 continues with that. It's Jesus speaking to his friends and followers um, around the table where they're eating together. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My father's house has plenty of room. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I'm in the Father, that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who's doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, all who have faith in me will do the works I've been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You might ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Anyone who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and will come to them and make them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. 
You heard me say I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you'd be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I've told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you'll believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes, so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come. Now, let us leave. What are we to make of this passage of scripture? Well, I'm going to share quite briefly this morning. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, says Jesus. <sighs> Easier said than done, huh? Easier said than done. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust. Trust in me. Trust in me. And Jesus, as he unpacks, just speaks again and again of, of, of how everything he's doing is, is, is part of what God the Father is doing. He's revealing God to people. And he's revealing a God of love. And he says, that there is love. There's love in God and, and care. And he speaks of going to prepare a place. To prepare a place. Place for his followers. Prepare a place for them. Hallelujah. Prepare a place for us with his Father. We're talking about our promised future. Part of the future which we are promised is eternity with God. These are troubling times. These are times when we are, I think, more aware of our mortality, our frailty, our physical frailty, than, than normally. But our eternal future is assured. Assured. When we trust in God and trust in Jesus. My father's house has plenty of room. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. That's what he says. You know, and, and, and why would I say that if it wasn't true? Will you trust me on that? He says. And he says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. And I don't blame Thomas for saying, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And he says, I'm the way. And here's the thing, we, we don't quite know what the future will look like. We, we don't quite know where the path will lead, let's be honest. But we know that when the path is Jesus and we commit our way to him, he, when, when he is our way, we are taken into eternity with God, a loving, glorious eternity with God. So part of this promised future is, is our ultimate destination, our ultimate destination of uh, being with God forever. Sometimes people say, you know, talk about glory they might talk about heaven they might talk about the new heavens and the new earth it, it is our assured future with god the father in community actually with others good reason not to let our hearts be troubled because our ultimate destination is assured when we trust in jesus
thank God for that. But I'm also wanting to say it's not just about the our ultimate future that Jesus speaks about. He also talks about our, our more immediate future, or the, the more immediate future of his followers who he's speaking to. But what he says to them is very relevant to us and, and resonates down the centuries. It, and it's true for us too, as it was true for them. He, um, he speaks of, of the gift of the Holy Spirit. He calls the Holy Spirit the, the advocate, some other translations say comforter that's picked up in a number of hymns isn't it oh comforter draw near within this heart appear but jesus promises the holy spirit sent by god by god the father and, and he says jesus talks about the holy spirit as as i will come to you we, we, we see the Trinity, we see the Father, Son and Holy Spirit all being one and, and, and he speaks about this from several different angles really. The, 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 the Father, the Son and the Spirit are one. But Jesus goes and the Spirit is sent. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And leaving the Spirit to all work on earth is done worth singing later I think uh, if you know that song God sending his Holy Spirit his very presence his very self into our hearts and among us to lead us into truth to comfort us The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, verse 26, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hmm. He's not leaving us as orphans. He's not abandoning us. And this is being said by Jesus on the day before he is about to be taken away and crucified. And the disciples are going to experience a kind of dislocation and a, a like, the like of which they've never known before. They are used to going around with Jesus Christ in bodily form. And suddenly he in bodily form is taken away from them. But he says, I, I, you're not abandoned in that. We're used to meeting together in bodily form, meeting together in one place as, as, as embodied people. And it's, it's tough when that's taken away. But we're not left as orphans, we're not abandoned. God is still God and he is. He gives us his very self. The Holy Spirit, he gives us his self and says, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. You're not abandoned. It looks massively different for the disciples than when Jesus was with them. Of course it does. He died. And rose again. <laughs> but it looks different. It's not the same. This looks different and it's not the same. But it kind of is the same because we're not abandoned and we've got the same teacher, we've got the same God, the same Holy Spirit lives in us. But it just looks different. But actually we can trust him as well, can't we? We can trust God. He says he's going to lead us into all truth. Wow, that's really important for me, for all of us. The Holy Spirit's going to lead us, going to, going to show us, going to guide us in the way ahead through tough times sure but he's there and he he's kind of the holy spirit is the presence of jesus within us and because jesus says uh, i will come to you see verse 18 i'll not leave you as orphans i will come to you so sometimes he's talking about the holy spirit being sent as, some, as a different person 
Sometimes he talks about him coming himself. It's all this interweaving of, 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 of God's Son, God Father, Son and Holy Spirit that we see there. Verse 27. Have this as your verse for the week. <laughs> Why don't you? John 14 verse 27. Maybe you might want to learn it. Commit it to memory. Maybe I should. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Let's pray. Oh Lord. Help us not to be afraid. But to trust in you. To believe you. Knowing our ultimate security is in you but also that you guide us every step of the way. You are the way, the truth and the life, O oh Lord Jesus, and we rejoice in that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. I thought it might be appropriate and good um, to um, Join in a kind of affirmation of faith, a creed, if you like. This one comes from the uh, most of the literature I've been using is coming from the United Reformed Church, but this comes from uh, some responses offered in the uh, Church of England's uh, common worship. The response to each of these questions, and I will leave a gap and then say it myself, is we believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. going to lead us in some prayers now lead us in prayer oh lord this is a frightening and, and dislocating time a, a time when church looks different family life looks different work looks different the present looks different and the future looks maybe more uncertain than it has ever looked but you, O oh Lord, are the one in whom we trust. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. You are the one we look to. We ask that you will help us to trust you. And through us, Lord, we ask that you will do your will within our communities, the communities in which we live, Camborne and elsewhere, as we are elsewhere. And in our online communities as well, which are becoming more important, Lord, may we be salt and light. Help us to be good neighbours, loving neighbours, to those who are around us. May we be people of hope, Beacons of light. We do pray for those who are ill at this time. Those who are gripped by fear. We 
and we pray for those who work in our health services in seeking to combat and, and fight against this disease. We seek your protection, O oh God. We ask for wisdom for our leaders, not just in this nation, but in all nations, that you will guide us through and help us to act wisely. Not to be concerned overly much for self-preservation, but concerned even more for the preservation of our neighbour. so that we reach out to them in love in the right ways and refrain <laughs> from reaching out to them in ways which might harm them. Oh, these are difficult times when we need to pull together without actually being together. When we keep our distance but long to hug one another. Keep us strong. Keep us faithful and help us in this community of Camborne Church to walk together, to, to build up our, our fellowship one with another. Thank you, Lord. We look to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite us to say the Lord's Prayer in the manner which, with which you're most familiar, your own language. I'm going to uh, lead us in prayer, particularly in the uh, slightly more modern uh, English form that we use usually at our 11 o'clock service. That's the wording I'm going to use. I don't have it in front of me, so I could use all kinds of wording because both sometimes come to mind. So we'll see what happens, actually. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh yes, Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. It's actually the moment on a Sunday morning when we would often encourage you to, um, or, or invite you to bring offerings. I will just at this point just mention the fact that uh, if you're wanting to give to the church, keep an eye on the website because there will be uh, ways coming up um, in the weeks ahead of, of, of giving financially uh, to the work of God in and through this church. That's not me trying to sort of drum up money. But it is trying to be honest about the fact that um, we still have expenses in these times and uh, we trust God to provide all that we need, but he often provides through his people. So um, so just just keep an eye on that for, for offerings. If you're somebody who normally gives on a Sunday morning, just a, a sort of reminder. Actually, let's pray for all the gifts coming into our church. Gifts not just of money, <laughs> but of, of, of talent and time which people are offering. Eternal God, we come with all these gifts to offer our sacrifice of praise and the service of our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some words from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace to you. Peace to you. With the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and the week ahead in all that you do. into eternity itself and you know his blessing in Jesus name Amen Bless you and uh, we will keep meeting in this way or similar ways in the weeks ahead Thank you